With the release of Super Bomberman R earlier this month on PS4 and Xbox One, all three current major systems finally have a Bomberman game. Believe it or not, that's the first time one could say that since 2010. It's been a rough few years for this series. However, Bomberman fans are being spoiled this year, as not only do we have an official game, PC, Xbox One, and Nintendo Switch owners were treated to another game very clearly inspired by Bomberman earlier this year with Bombslinger. Made by Belgian indie studio Mode 4, Bombslinger takes the Bomberman concept and throws in an incredibly interesting wrinkle. The single player is a procedurally generated roguelike, very reminiscent of The Binding of Isaac. Also, it's based in the Wild West, just to make it even weirder. Does this odd combination work, like peanut butter and chocolate, or more like peanut butter and a peanut allergy? And at $12, is Bombslinger a better bang for your buck than the much more expensive Bomberman R? Well, the developers sent me a review copy of the game on the Xbox One, so it's my job to find out. First, for anybody unfamiliar with Bomberman, it's a series that has spanned three decades on a very simple concept. Walk around on a top-down grid-based map, dropping bombs to clear debris and take down enemies. The bombs explode after a short fuse, sending fire in any open direction. You have to outsmart and trap your opponents to win, all the while collecting power-ups around the map. Now, the first thing people generally think of when talking about Bomberman is probably its multiplayer, but in the case of Bomb Slinger, I'm going to save that for the end. You'll see why in a little bit. The real meat of this game is in its story mode. You play as McMean, a grizzled former outlaw who was turned on by his old gang. He returns home one day to find his ranch ablaze and his wife dead. Vowing to take revenge on everybody responsible, he buries his beloved and sets off. Throughout the game are several increasingly lengthy, randomly generated stages, each of which ends in a duel against one of McMean's former friends. Or a goat. I don't know why, but hey, it's an easy boss, so I'll take it. If you've ever played The Binding of Isaac, or even the early top-down Legend of Zelda games, this will probably look familiar. You're placed in a dungeon-like level, and you'll proceed room by room to the boss. Finding your way to said boss is part of the fun. You have no idea when you land, what you'll run into, or how this adventure will differ from the last. Well, somewhat. The level order is static, so you're going to see the same locales in the same sequence, more often than not ending in the same boss fights. Each time you enter a new room for the first time, the exits lock down until you kill every last enemy. The enemy variety is one of this game's stronger points. While you start out fighting hapless hicks with pitchforks, very quickly you're taking on smarter enemies with guns, boars that charge you at first sight, and teleporting mages for some reason. Each individual room, no matter how early or late you are in the game, becomes its own little puzzle. How are you going to work your way through the enemies with the equipment you have? If you're low on health, how are you going to do so without taking a hit? These questions constantly buzz through your mind throughout the adventure, and every time you execute your plan perfectly, it's an amazing feeling that keeps you coming back for more. For a game very clearly inspired heavily by both Bomberman and The Binding of Isaac, Bombslinger simultaneously feels like familiar territory and a never-before-seen experience. Now, what about if you don't execute that plan perfectly? What if things go awry? Well, if you die, that's it. You're back to the ranch and the very start of your adventure. As you get further in the game, you can unlock new equipment and extra slots so that you can use more equipment. Each item can enhance or manipulate your adventure in some way. From an extra heart or a larger blast radius on your bombs, to alternate bomb types, or even a one-use revive when you die, this is how expert players will optimize their adventure. Just be prepared to see this screen a lot, because Bombslinger is brutal. For a good couple hours, I was hitting a wall in just the second level of the game, quite often even kicking the bucket at the first part. Some of that was naturally due to me playing the game more aggressively than I should have, I'll admit that, but more often than not, it was just that I had a bad run due to the game's procedural generation. You see, sprinkled throughout each run are treasure chests that can be unlocked by keys or the gold that enemies drop, and each level has a shop for you to purchase upgrades as well. Quick aside, the visuals inside the shops are super cool. It's still the same pixel art visuals, but it zooms into this pseudo 3D camera angle. It always made me smile. Anyway, taking down enemies will earn you experience to level up as well, at which point you get a bonus perk, such as an extra hit or a bomb, a health refill, and so on. 
what level up options you're given, how many treasure chests and keys even show up, what's inside those chests, and what's inside the shop are, like the rest of the game, randomized. You could end up with a really great secondary weapon like bear traps or a gun and cruise through the early parts of the game. You might end up cursed with a run where you're walking into a boss fight with one bomb, a small blast radius for the bomb, and three hearts just because you got unlucky when the game generated that run. Or, far more likely, you'll end up at the start of the game again because you happen to run into one too many gunslingers far too early. Don't bring a bomb to a gunfight, folks. Over time, you do get used to some of these enemies, you learn their patterns, and you can more easily take them down, but it's incredibly frustrating running into these enemies when you're woefully underprepared. It never feels particularly satisfying taking these shotgun guys down when at a disadvantage, it just feels like I scraped by out of sheer luck. When you're loaded to the brim of your 10-gallon hat with a dozen perks, 8 hearts, and remote detonation bombs though, oh man, that's when the game's at its best. For as difficult as it is, it doesn't always feel warranted. My last run when I was recording footage, I just so happened to get further than I ever had before, only because early on the levels avoided those gunslingers and I ended up overpowering myself by the time I got to level 2. I feel the enemy balance just isn't here in the early part of the game. It's one thing to have randomized enemy types, that's fine, but it's another thing entirely to throw some of the bigger challenges in the game at the very start rather than randomly generate along a decently organized difficulty curve. That's just one of the game's many mixed signals. Another major mixed signal is, well, the core concept of the game. I don't know that bomb slingers, puzzle, and roguelike elements truly mix together. It's a hell of an idea, definitely one of the most interesting I've seen in 2018, and when it really works, this might be one of my favorite games of this year so far. But 70% of the time, it doesn't work. That's not the fault of any one part of the game. Like I said, the enemies are varied and for the most part fun. The bosses, even when easy, are great. The RNG elements are by design addictive, and the game looks, feels, and sounds like a total blast. All of these different things just don't work together in most of the game's runs. What's most disappointing is that there are a few easy ways this could have been fixed just off the top of my head. For one, being able to choose the randomly generated seed you play on would have gone a long way if something like a difficulty slider wasn't feasible. If an inexperienced player can choose to master a specific run rather than hope they don't get screwed, it's going to make the game a hell of a lot more enjoyable. Alternatively, it could simply be easier to refill your health. Something simple like paying gold to refill a heart and making that a consistent feature of the shop rather than a random item that you might get at the counter instantly fixes some of that difficulty spiking. If you want to preserve some of that difficulty, make it more expensive each time you use it in one run. The last option I have is the most drastic. Perhaps this game shouldn't have been a roguelike to begin with, or could have at least been optionally so. An optional item early on to guarantee permanent respawns might turn off the hardcore roguelike players, but it would be far more accessible for those who want to avenge McMean's wife. With the way the story presents itself and the fantastic soundtrack driving you forward, you want to get to the end. But for most players, I can guarantee they won't ever get there. I would even argue that the game might have been better off by not being procedurally generated for that very reason. The moments where Bombslinger clicks are fantastic, and had the team designed the game by hand to allow you more of those moments, it would be a far more memorable experience than it currently is. Instead, the game doesn't live up to the promise of being the next Binding of Isaac or the next Bomberman, it just shows the promise of being something more, a promise it can't keep. Alright, let's talk about that multiplayer. Take everything I said throughout this review and throw it out. It's not a roguelike, it's not a twist on the formula, the multiplayer is just basic Bomberman, and it's not even good Bomberman. The power-ups you get are drawn from the story mode, but the icons are not as instantly recognizable as those in Bomberman. Instead, you get a bunch of powers that all have similar icons, and you have to explain to your friends what Tumbleweed does because there's no option in the pause menu that explains these power-ups for you. I'm still not sure what some of these powers do. Unless miraculously all of your friends have played Bombslinger individually, it's not a good multiplayer experience. And no, there's no online play, so even if your friends online have played the Bombslinger campaign, you've got to get them all on your couch. There are a dozen different maps to play on, but the multiplayer is too bland to justify going through each, especially with only two basic game modes. 
it's just not worth it. So, would I recommend this game over Super Bomberman R? Well, first off, if you own a PS4, it's not even there at the time of this review, so that's a bit of a knock on it right out of the gate. At $12, unless you're a huge fan of roguelikes and you've had your fill of the kings of the genre already, I don't think I can even recommend Bombslinger in general, let alone over Bomberman, and that makes me sad. I love how it looks, I'm even more in love with the soundtrack, but the gameplay on the whole just doesn't scratch either itch that it tries to. I want to see more from this team though, because they had something magical on their hands, even if ever so briefly. I think if you find the game on sale for 5 or 6 dollars, it would be worth trying, perhaps it'll click more for you than it did for me. If you're looking for a fun game to play with friends or a more defined single player experience, the Bombing King hasn't been dethroned yet. Thanks for watching. Let me know what you think about Bombslinger or even suggest a game that you'd like to see me cover in the comments down below. And while you're down there, make sure you hit the like button. It really does help. If you're looking for more reviews of all sorts of games, both classic and modern, don't forget to subscribe. I've reviewed over 100 games and counting, so you never know. I may recommend to you your next favorite game.